substance and power of Almighty God. All right, if you found your place, let's begin reading in verse number 17. Psalms 34 and verse number 17. And I want you to notice what our scripture is really referencing. He says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Wow, what a promise. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. I should get an amen right there. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Referencing our Lord. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. What a promise for the righteous of God to believe that God said, I can deliver you from all your problems and afflictions. Time frame might be different, but he did promise. The psalmist said he has delivered us from all of our afflictions. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day that you've given us. I thank you for the precious work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for these beautiful songs that have such a message of praise. Lord, that we are to sing to you to lift you up and to honor you with all that we are. I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for its, its precious promises and the, the beautiful power that is demonstrated in the scriptures. I pray that you will speak to our hearts today. And most of all, I pray that you will start with me. Help me to say what's only needful today. And, and I pray what's said and done here today will bring honor and glory to the Lamb of God. Help us, we humbly pray, for all these things, Lord, that we ask, we ask today in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for your standing. If you would, look back in, look back in verse number four. Well, this is really good. Got myself together here. Look back in verse number four, and I want you to see that it says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Now, verse number 7, it says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Boy, there's a message of deliverance. And again, in verse 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all. I hope your Bible has the word all their troubles. And then in verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. I'm glad today that we can say we have a God that hears delivers and rescues those who are in trouble, those who are wandering afar off. So today our title is a simple title, but I think it has merit and it gives a testimony of who we are. Our title today is In God We Trust. Where do we see that today? We see it on our money. I've understood that over the years, many unbelievers say that they are broken, disturbed uh, with the concept of God that we trust. And they want that removed off of our money. But thank God, our Supreme Court has ruled and said that if that was to take place, it would no longer be called legal tender. So thank God we have the, uh, the idea. I believe it's also on our legal documents, our Constitution and the Declaration of Independence about 
that we are protected and, and watched over by our Creator. And I'm so glad, but I don't need to look on a dollar bill. Uh, for many of y'all, would probably be looking on your hundreds uh, to see in God we trust. But when I see that, it like it doesn't make me stop and and really consider what I've just read because I see it all the time. But when I read it in this book, when I see that my God has got my back, He's got me in all my afflictions and all my troubles. Uh, I was talking to a man in just the last couple of weeks, and uh, I was literally brokenhearted because. He began to tell me just how much problems. He said he almost thought the world was coming to an end because he said if it could go wrong, it has happened here at my house. I have four cars and all of them have been broken. Not one of them is up and running. And he said, and then my family's car, which I was going to borrow, their car was broken and their car was in the shop. He said... Man, I begin to wonder what is taking place. And then he said, slipping and falling, it would probably be better for us to go ahead and fall than it would be to go through all the things we're trying to do to catch ourselves because we end up pulling more things trying to uh, protect ourselves. But we don't know this morning how long that our national motto is going to reside on the money and in the place of our government in God we trust. Nor do we know how long the phrase will continue to be uh, America's uh, belief system. Even though it's on our currency, we do not need today as Christians the words in God we trust, for we always do. But I'm bringing this thought today because sometimes Christians need to be slowed down a little bit in life. And as we slow down, it's usually because of situations, things that are coming in and out of our lives. And as they do, it begins to make us uh, kind of take a, a good look at our life and, and understanding are we doing the things that is pleasing to the Lord. Uh, it, it does make great sense for Christians to have this in their heart. In God we trust. We should believe on God, rely on God, and of course trust in God. The wisest thing that you and I could do is to make our trust in God a habit. It's something that we do even if a situation doesn't merit uh, some faith, we just do it because it's what we do by habit. We've made conscious choices to say, I just trust God. Uh, all the people that I've been around over the years that have uh, had some serious sickness, had some things like uh, the thought of cancer or the thought of leukemia or some of the things that come in our lives, I ask people sometimes in a simple way, what do you think when you hear these words, you have cancer? Does it shake you? Does it make you nervous? Does it, does it make you wonder, is, is God still there? Uh, does God know what he's doing? I mean, has God got something for me? Am I going to be healed? Uh, or am I going to, as many do in this day and time, pass away? Uh, usually the words... Uh, you don't have long to live as has a lot of fear. But to us that name the name of Christ, all they're saying is you're fixing to get to see Jesus face to face. I mean, how bad can that be? And the only thing is, is you're going to leave your family here. And therefore, sometimes we're not sure if we have all of our ducks in a row, we've got everything prepared and uh, I've, heard, I've heard men that I've worked with have been told, uh, you have probably anywhere from three to six months to live. Uh, you need to get all your uh, important things uh, taken care of. Uh, it could be less than the three months. So I've asked them, 
Well, how did that make you feel? He said, well, I don't know that uh, it could be put into words. He said, you automatically think, first thing, death is inevitable. Unless God chooses to heal or a new medicine comes out or something happens, uh, you know that that is where we're going. So I said, but does it draw you closer to Christ in these last days? And he said, Yes, I think it does because you know in your heart I'm fixing to leave this physical realm and I'm fixing to be translated into the spiritual realm and I want everything in these last six months to count because that's all the time I have. I said, well, you know, that you make a very valid point. But I said, but what about this? Since you and I don't know what day we're going to leave, why don't we make every day valid? Why don't we take every day and say, today could be my last? Because I don't know that there's not an 18-wheeler down there at the red light that's got my name on it. It has almost happened one time about 25 years ago. Uh, the kids and I were coming to Sunday school, and uh, I was on Bethel Road fixing to turn out on 67 to head to the church. And I remember that particular time I was kind of like staring in a daze like I do a lot. And the light had turned green, but I didn't take off. And I think one of the kids said, Dad, the light's green. Well, about the time that I was letting my foot off the brake and hit, mash the gas, a, a truck was coming down 67, headed toward the interstate, and had his hand on his horn just beeping and beeping and beeping, and all of a sudden went by probably 50 miles an hour, and I thought, wow, had I done what I normally do, would have hit right in the driver's door, and I would have said, I would have just seen you in just a minute ago. So it made me think, boy, you really need to keep your wits about you and your heart. And I said, you know, Lord, you could have took me just about a minute ago. You, I could have been with you in the presence of God uh, my kids were in the car. I would have hoped that they would have been okay. But I was thinking, instead of going to church, I could have went to the big church. Amen. I could have had the shouting time and been in glory some 25 or 30 years. But we want to look back at verse number 22. He said, The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. In the book of Psalms, the word trust appears 50 times. This morning, I'd like to try to encourage you in this psalm uh, to trust God and his son a little more each day as we look at the aspects of trust that are found in the book of Psalms, and we'll be looking at some other scriptures. Now, number one, I'd like for you to think about the redemptive trust. What it takes for you and I to put our faith and trust in Christ to redeem us. He said he would. He said he came for the purpose to redeem us. And thank God he's done all his part and did it well. So we don't have to worry, uh, is it set? Is it ready? Will it last? Thank God for eternal security. Thank God that I can hide in the promises of Christ that no matter what my enemy throws against me, I'm still going to be in the presence of God. It might be sooner than later, but thank God because of the promises, I love knowing I have eternal, everlasting life. What a joy that when I have a good day, I'm going to heaven. When I have a bad day, I'm still going to heaven so no matter what I do, I'm going to heaven because I've been blood bought. I've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Verse 22 said, The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. In order for you and I to trust God, we must begin with the issue that is of the utmost importance, is that we trust Christ, his finished work at Calvary, that will literally bring us into the presence of God. His blood will wash away our sins. 
our names will then be recorded in the Lamb's book of life. And thank God, he don't have an eraser. Amen? Our name is recorded. Let me, let me, let me clarify. My name is recorded. And I'm not trying to be ugly. But I don't know for a fact that your name is recorded. You say that it is. And on the other hand, you don't know if my name is recorded. You just have to trust me, right? I haven't seen the book. I haven't seen your name. I'm not sure you're going to heaven. All I know is one person. I don't know if my wife's going to heaven. I don't know if my kids are going to heaven. They say, she says, yes, I am. And I always like to pick at her. Uh, when she comes home, anybody called? Yep, the Lord. She said, well, what did he say? I said, well, he said he hadn't heard from you in a while. She said, you keep using that same one. Well, I just want you to know. She said, he heard from me before he heard from you. Well, that's true. I don't get up at 4.30 in the morning. So she's absolutely right. She did, he did get to hear from her before he did to me. But he did hear from me last, last night, and you were still in the bed, amen, so. Uh, I still have some good things going for me because when I go to bed 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm still talking to the Lord. So thank God for the promise that he said he would redeem me. Now, he said he would redeem the world. All that would come under him, he said he would redeem them. And isn't it a shame that so many people is going to wait till some of the last minutes, they're going to wait till they're sick, in the hospital with cancer before they're going to give God uh, really a first look. And what they don't understand is you don't have to be sick to die. You can be perfectly healthy. And all of a sudden when your time is called, you're going. Now, I don't know where you're going, but you're going to leave this life when God said it's your time. So thank God we can trust Christ and then you can put all the worries behind you forever. You won't never have to worry, oh, I sure hope I'm still going to heaven. God said he's redeemed you and he's never lost one that he's ever redeemed. What a record. What a record, amen. He said, all that I've received, none have I lost. Man, now that's saying something. We need to understand, and listen what Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 said. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. But he said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. We need help every day, and God demands punishment for sin, and sin will be punished. Many times, because of the sinful choices, man is beginning to reap many of the benefits of wrong choices and problems. I remember we had a, a printing ministry here, and it was called uh, the Ambassadors for Christ. Brother Tom, you remember that uh, man that was here uh, ran a printing ministry, and they were, they were entitled the Ambassadors for Christ. He was here and he was on uh, two uh, walkers, not the crutches, but the small walkers. And he said, let me go ahead and, and tell everybody. He said, I keep explaining. So I'll just tell the church, I won't have to say this anymore, why I'm on these walkers. He said, when I was 17, I was raised in a good godly Christian home. But one Friday night after a football game, we made some not so good choices. And I went out with my friends and we celebrated. I celebrated a bit too much. And he said, everything was going well until I was trying to drive home to my parents' house. He said, I either passed out, looked off the road, something happened. And as I was running off the road, he said, my car went up the guide wire of the poles and it went up and turned over and then slammed into the post and broke the post. And he said, and it fractured most of my spine. So all I'm saying is my one time of sin 
and too much to drink, he said, for the last 20-something years, I've been being reminded of the choice that I made. And he said, and I'm glad that I can at least pull my legs because for years I couldn't even stand. So he said, but I'm always reminded of the sin choice that I made. And he said, but that's all right. God has given me a ministry of printing gospel tracts. I hope they're still uh, doing uh, the very work that they had started. But God said that these souls are his. Now, will we all come to him and give him what's rightfully his? No, because God believes in your self-will choices. We can say, yes, I need a Savior, or we can say, no, I think I'm doing pretty good. I've done good for 40 years and uh, don't seem to be doing too bad, as a man told me uh, just a couple of months back, and he said, I've made it all my life without God. Why do I need him now? I said, well, whether you need him to live by, you're definitely going to need him to die by because you're going to leave this world. And all he could say is, so you say. No, thus saith the Lord. God said we're going to leave this world. But my trust is in the God that not only saves me, but delivers me out of all our problems. In order to trust God, you don't have to have an issue. You have to have faith. Faith says, believe in what you cannot see. I'm glad in order to trust Christ, it had to be more than me seeing his presence of the resurrection. And, you know, Easter is almost right upon us. We've got hardly about a month, and we'll be having the wonderful time of being able to rejoice with Christ about the resurrection, and thank God that we have that. But the Bible tells us that the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. The price was paid and it was paid dearly by our Lord himself when he died on the cross at Calvary. So the Lord redeems the soul of his servants. How do we know if his servants are sure about what their choices are? I hate to think that if I died, I would die. Well, I sure hope God meant what he said because Jesus has never played with words. Jesus has always said exactly what he means, and he means exactly what he says. According to the verse that we just read, uh, God's servants are the ones who get to trust, to take refuge, or to refuse and take risk at their own hands. That's exactly why you and I have put our faith in the virgin-born Savior of Calvary because we know he's God the Son. He is our Lord, our soon coming King, and today he is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that he asked me one day to be a part of his family. And I'm so thrilled that one day when conviction started pricking my heart and started stirring in my soul, when I didn't know what to do, I just cried out and said, God, help me. God, be merciful to me a sinner. And I want to tell you, when I left the altar that day, wow, I've never been the same since. And if you're not different, and if you're not different, I would worry. The Bible said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's something that's been created. You're not warmed over. You're not a new relief. You're a brand new creation in Christ. And then he said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's been one of my life verses because the first time I read that, I said, hey, that's what happened to me. I have not been the same. Christ has took things away from me and implanted new things. And I'm rejoicing because I have a verse that said, hey, Donald, this is exactly what took place in your life. And I want to tell you something. Being a good church member can't give you that. Following the Lord in baptistry, amen. A lot of people say, I believe in God and to get into the baptistry. It's a little bit more than believing in. It's accepting. Can I tell you something? The devils believe in God. They believe in him, but they're not trusting him but they know who he is, they fear him, 
All through the Gospels, we, we hear about their conversations and they fear him about what he's going to do. So for us, the fear says, have I put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation? Yes. All right, now, am I still fully trusting in his grace each and every day? Verse 22 says also, watch this, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. The word desolate means condemned. I am not going to be condemned with the wicked. When our faith is in Christ, our sins have been paid for. That's what redemption is. When we are redeemed, we're not condemned. Boy, that ought to make a Baptist shout. I am not condemned, thank God. We have to understand there's a redemptive trust. Number two, there's a resourceful trust. Listen what Psalms 56 verse 3 said. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. When I'm scared, when I'm terrified, and I don't know what to do, I'll just trust you because I don't know anything else to do. Notice this morning that trust is a decision I get to make. You get to make. I can choose to be uptight or I can choose to trust. You know, we ask our kids, trust me. I'm going to take care of you. Uh, Mom and dad know what to do. We've got your best interest at heart. We're going to do our best to make this life as good and as great as God will allow us to. But I want you to trust me that we've got your best interest always at heart. God is my and your resource. I must trust or I can pay another debt which is, turns into anxiety, fear, worry, high blood pressure, or maybe even high sugar, amen? Or it could be et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But God tells us in Psalms 28, verse number seven, the Lord is my strength and my shield. We know what a shield does, it protects us, kind of like the armor of God we just heard about. David said, my heart trusteth in him, and I am helped Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. With my song will I praise him. When my trust is in God this morning and your trust, we're trusting in the arm of the Lord. We're trusting in his strength. Now, if you and I could comprehend this thought, where are God's weaknesses? Well, it doesn't take me long to understand he has none. And if he did... His weakness would believe for me is that he loves me despite all my infirmities. He loves unconditional. God has no weaknesses today, tomorrow, or any other day. The devil has no part. He could literally destroy him at the snap of a finger if he so chose. And I always wondered, as a new Christian. You know, when the devil decided to try to exalt his throne above yours in heaven, why didn't you just annihilate him? And then we could have all been living in the Garden of Eden. Amen? But you know, mankind needed something to make choices about. Other than that, we would just be robots. We'd be like the angelic host not knowing to choose, but he gave us a free will. So mankind gets to openly and decisively choose. Will God be my Savior? And once we're saved, will God help me today or will I handle it? I know so many people that thinks, I got this. Amen, you ever heard that? I've got this. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. I've told my wife when I'm about to do plumbing, I've got this. And I turn my back and say, oh, God, help me. Because I don't have it, but I don't want to make her nervous, amen. 
I want her to think the plumber has arrived when I don't even know how to spell plumbing. So that's always been, that's always been something in my past. How many's ever had a leaky sink? Just drip, drip, you turn it tight, 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 and it drip, drips. Well, I said, honey, I got this. And I get under there and start checking and checking and checking. And when I get done, it's not a drip anymore, it's running. Amen. And then she says, I wish you wouldn't touch the plumbing. I said, well, you was probably needing a new sink anyway. Amen. Because whenever I touch it, boy, we're in trouble. So don't ever ask me to come help you do any plumbing because all I will do is hand you parts. You get to do it. Amen. I don't mind doing some roofing. I don't mind doing some electrical work, but something about plumbing. And I keep telling myself, I've got this. And the Lord probably says, you've never had it yet, and you'll never have it in the future. Amen. The only thing I can fix is if it doesn't have water in it. I can fix an air leak, but I can't fix water leaks. It's a trust factor that I know now. I get on my knees in my secret place and say, Lord, I'm fixing to do some plumbing. Boy, do I need your help. Because I don't want to replace everything. And listen, I have done so well one of the last times I did plumbing, I replaced all the pipes under my house, all of them. Because I got tired fixing, leaking, fixing, leaking, fixing, leaking, so I ripped it all out, put all brand new pipes in there, and I said, now leak. I was careful to say that. I understood that, Lord, I'm praying prayers over this that you'll help me and strengthen me and teach me. So I've learned I don't have it. Amen. Number three, there must be a reliable trust. Again, Psalms 18, verse number two. This is what it says. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation in my high tower. We should trust God because he's trustworthy. He is our rock. Anything not built on a rock will not stand. Amen. A fortress is a stronghold, a place of protection. It is a position which to fight. There is no stronger fortress than that of God. So think of God as your deliverer. God is my God, my strength, my deliverer. He is my deity. He is the ruler of the universe. He is my strength every day. When you have a problem and I have a problem, who do you rely on? Do you rely on yourself, your spouse, your friends, the government, or do you rely on God for his strength? Remember, God is reliable. And this morning, let me give you a couple of thoughts why I trust God, because his love and his standard is high above all others. Number one, the God who runs the universe is helping me. And I think if he can run the universe, he can take care of my little problems. The God who has made me, his child, is helping me. He's got my back, as I said earlier. The God who defends me is helping me. And the God who I love with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind wants me to be joyful in him. And let's finish up with the rewarded trust. Psalms 84, verse 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Psalms 34, 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Do you follow our pattern? Psalms 31, verse 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. It's very, very rewarding for you and I to put our trust in the Lord. And by doing so, the lost and dying worlds see something in acting in our lives that many times we can't explain. Thank God for salvation. But what about Monday morning when everything begins to fall apart? Do we say, I just trust the Lord. He'll make something else happen. 
This door might close, but this door will open. And I have been there and so have you because our God has got all the afflictions and problems associated with this life in his hand. Hiding under the right hand of God gives me strength and it helps others to know. Because here's what we do. When somebody hears bad news, we're so quick to say, how are you doing? What they want to know is how are you handling this news? How are you able to cope? And most godly people say, with the Lord, everything will be okay. And that's true because whether I go home, it's okay. Whether I stay healed, it's okay. I'm a winner either way things go. Let's stand to our feet if you would please this morning. Reliable trust, rejoicing trust, rewarded trust, redemptive trust, and it's very resourceful for you and I to trust our Lord because he has the answers you and I are looking for. I want you to take and turn your songbooks to page 308. I was thinking about this song this morning. Before we sing, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to open the Word of God. Thank you for the power and resources in your precious promises. I'm so glad that you are the Redeemer. I'm so glad that you are the God of my universe. I'm glad that you have taken care of all things. Yes, there are so many things happening all around us. But I know you have a plan. You have something you're carrying out. And we are following along you as close as we can follow to see the things that are going to be unfolding in these last days. I know you've told us that things are going to wax worse and worse and no doubt as far as we're concerned they are. But I pray for those who do not know you today. Can you imagine, like me for 27 years, I tried to fix all my own problems and I had nowhere to turn. But I'm so glad the day that you brought me into your presence. I'm so glad when I got to be a part of your family. Now there's no need to worry. My father has everything in control. You have all things unto yourself. You have blessed us. You have taught us. You've used us. And I pray that you'd help many more days ahead. Lord, that you have chosen for each one of us. Help us to be a blessing. Help us to be an encouragement. And then help us to trust you no matter what unfolds. I bless your holy name today. If there's anyone here not saved, please, oh God in heaven, let today be their day that you bring conviction, reveal to them their condition that if they were to leave this world today, they're not ready. They're not prepared. But if they would just exercise the faith that you've given them, Lord, heaven will be worth it all. Thank you now for what you're going to do. Please strengthen us with the promises of God. Teach us to stand true to the faith and the trust that we say we have in you. Thank you now for what you're going to do. Help us, we humbly pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Page 308. Please, please look at these